New programming coming to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Network. Tell the folks what they're gonna see, Shane. Well, well, I'll tell you what you're gonna see. You're gonna see our good friends Nikki and Nina exploring some of the greatest, most mind-boggling escapes in history. Well, that sounds real good. When can I see that? Right now. I'm Nina. And I'm Nikki. And we're gonna be discussing some of the greatest, most elusive, most mind-boggling escapes that have ever happened. My mind's gonna get boggled. You're gonna get boggled. Oh boy. Today, we're gonna be talking about Frank Abagnale Jr. and his elusive escape from a federal detention center in Atlanta. Frank Abagnale Jr. was a man a criminal, an imposter. Have you ever heard of Catch Me If You Can? Yeah, the movie where they're like running. Yes. I haven't seen the movie. It's very good. You should watch it. Oh. That movie is based on an autobiographical novel Frank Abagnale Jr. wrote about his own life. Oh, so he's Leo DiCaprio. Yes. When he was 16, he decided to move to New York. He altered his driver's license to say that he was actually 26, even though he's 16. He Did was... he look 26? Yeah, he was like tall. But that's not all you need to look 26. Mm. He realized that it was very expensive to live in New York. Still is. So he decided to cash uh, fraudulent checks and defraud banks. He knew how to do that at the age of 16. Yeah, he was really smart and very charming. He would impersonate people in order to seem more legit when he was cashing these fraudulent checks. Ah. And he impersonated a pilot, a doctor, and a lawyer. Dang. Eventually, Frank was caught for all of his crimes. Oh, okay, As cool. one is. Yeah. Uh, he spent about a year in European prisons. Oh. And then they sent him back to the U.S. And it was decided that he would go to a federal detention center in Atlanta. <gasps> That's what this is! Yeah, this is from where he escaped. Great! So, Frank and a U.S. Marshal go to prison. They go and they <laughs> check in at the prison like they do at a hotel. Right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank. <laughs> I'm here to get my room. <laughs> but Frank got pretty lucky. The U.S. Marshal who brought him in uh, did not have his papers. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because of that, a lot of the employees of the prison thought that he he was a prison inspector because at the time a lot of prisons were under scrutiny from like civil rights groups and like uh, people for like the poor treatment of prisoners. So right. prison inspectors were spending a lot more time in prisons. Oh, so they were like, sure, this guy doesn't have papers. Yeah. We don't know why he's here. Yeah. He must be a prison inspector. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, they really thought they, he was a prison yeah, inspector. Okay. No yep. quotes. So no, okay. Okay. And also, they did not put him in a prison uniform. So he just kept his suit and tie. I think he was in like regular clothes. Close, but yeah. At this point, Frank has a pretty cushy prison life, mm. and he's like, yo, I can probably get out of here. The prison break. The prison break. But as with most prison breaks, you need some help from the outside. And here's where you get to test your knowledge, Nikki. Oh, no. He has the option to call somebody, and I'll give you three options. Sure. Does he call his parents, his girlfriend, or his lawyer? Let's think about this. In all the TV that I've watched, mm -hmm. people always ask for their lawyers. They say lawyer first. And they're always like, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm talking about lawyers here. And if he was brought in with no papers, the lawyer could just be like, you have him here with no papers. You don't know who he is or why he's here. You can't just detain him. Mm -hmm. So I would do lawyer. You're gonna guess lawyer? I would guess that he calls the lawyer. You think wrong. He does not call his lawyer. That makes so much sense. <laughs> he actually calls his girlfriend. Ah. Uh. A still loyal girlfriend by the name of Jean Sebring. Jean Sebring. A smart and crafty lady. Okay, so Frank gets to make a phone call. Yes. And he calls up Jean Sebring and he's like, Listen, I wanna break out of here. You wanna help me? And she's like, Oh my god, yeah. And so. <laughs> That's what she says. Yeah. break you out of there? That's the transcript. Okay, so Jean shows up to prison. She floats on in to the visitation room Here to visit him. She's on one side of the glass. Yes. Frank gets to meet oh, on the other side of the glass, so romantic. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jean. Hi, Missed Frank. you. Oh my god, Sam. Where have you been? What? Tell me everything. Because Frank has been living this cushy, cushy life in prison. So cushy. He's been still getting the paper, and uh, he knows that prisons are under scrutiny for their right. handling of prisoners. Sure. And he says to Gene, there's this guy named C.W. Dunlap. He's a prison inspector. Oh. You go pretend to be a reporter and talk to him. And she's like, yes. She does that for, what does she get in return? She's just loyal to him. Okay, so Jean's like, bye, love you. Mm -hmm. Here she comes. Yep. All right, so she hops on in to the prison inspector's office. C.W. Dunlap here, want to know about 
prisons? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> she pretends to do a report on fire safety in prisons. They do a whole little fake interview. She's like, wow, you're so interesting, tell me more. And he's like, oh my God, let me tell you more. At the end, she's like, listen, if I have any follow-up questions, can I just have your business card? And he's like, totally. So he gives her his business card. Okay. And she leaves and goes back to the prison. So Jane comes back and visits Frankie Boy. She hands over C.W. Dunlap's business card, so okay. now Frank has that. Doesn't he have to hide it in his butt cheeks or something? No, she can give him anything as long as she shows it to the guards. That's how prison worked back then. <laughs> so then he's like, FBI agent Sean O'Reilly, the guy who hunted me down, did he contact you? And she's like, oh my god, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, do you have his business card? And she's like, yeah. He's gonna do this with business cards? Yeah, it's That's business all it takes? Listen, he's a fraud master. <laughs> Jean leaves once more. Again. Mm -hmm. oh, she's just, does she have a job? Like, what is she, how does she have so much free time? I don't know, he doesn't really talk that much about her. So she goes to a print shop and she's like, my dad is FBI agent Sean O'Reilly and he moved as a gift. I want to give him 500 new business cards with his new phone numbers. And they're like, oh my God, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and so she gives them the new phone numbers. Okay, she makes fraudulent business cards. Yeah. For Sean O'Reilly, the FBI agent. Yeah, so they say Sean O'Reilly, FBI agent, and they have two phone numbers, both of which go to pay phones in a mall. Oh my God. Yeah. She comes back with one of the business cards. Then she hands this business card over. He's like, cool. The plan is in motion. So yeah. he has two business cards. Mm -hmm. One for the prison inspector, C.W. Dunlap. Mm -hmm. One for the FBI agent, Sean O'Reilly, but it's got fake numbers on it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. It takes. So, she leaves. Bye, babe, love you. <laughs> the next day, Frank puts his plan into motion. Okay. He's like, okay, one of you little guards, come here. I really am a prison inspector. What? Look, here's my business card. I'm C.W. Dunlap. Wow. The genius of this is if they called to verify, the office would be closed. Duh. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> the guard's like, oh my God, we knew. We <laughs> always knew. And we so, were right. So he's like, can I talk to the big cheese of the prison? Big cheese. Lieutenant Combs. And he's like, totally. And so they take him over. To talk to Lieutenant Combs. To talk to Lieutenant Combs. And Lieutenant Combs is like, we knew you were a prison inspector all oh, along. Because they're smart. They're smart. And he's like, you guys totally got me. Wow. You guys are geniuses. So smart. So smart. You have such big muscles. Best prison. Best number one prison. Number one prison. You get one of those little Oscars that say number one prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he basically tells him, look, I've 100% totally inspected your prison up and down, and it's fully legit. You guys have nothing to worry about. I need a favor. Mm. So, what does he ask him for? I'm gonna give you some options. Great. So he can either ask for Lieutenant Combs to make him a phone call. Okay. He can ask to be taken to the nearest police station to file his fake his prison report. report. Right. Mm -hmm. He can ask for tools to further inspect some interior details of the prison. Okay, so the first one was for an extra phone call. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Combs to make a phone to call, make a phone for, call him. for him okay. on his behalf. That might be an option, especially since he had some phone numbers fudged with. But it is interesting if he could get escorted out of the prison to a police station to be like, hey, it's me, a prison inspector. And then he could just walk out. That's kind of like been his whole shtick the whole time anyway. He's been like a doctor, he's been a lawyer, and now he's like, I'm a prison inspector. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So maybe that, let's go with that one. Mm -hmm. No. Why would he do that, Nikki? Because he's why an imposter. He, he's why a fraud. Would he, why would he go from jail to a police station? <laughs> That's not what happens. Ugh, fine. He asks Lieutenant Combs to make a phone call for him. Mm. FBI agent Sean O'Reilly. Name dropping. Mm -hmm. We have some real big business to deal with. Big business. And I got to contact him. So can you call this number for me? And he slides his business card over with the fake phone numbers. Ah! Yep. And he, so he picks up the phone and he calls the, the mall pay phones. Pay phone. The pay phone. The pay phone. The pay phone at the mall. The pay phone at the mall. The mall pay phone. That's who he calls. And guess who picks up? Jean Seabrain. Yep. And she pretends to be Sean O'Reilly's secretary. Ah. And she's like, oh, you want to talk to Sean O'Reilly? Sure, totally. Let me put him on for you. And Lieutenant Combs just hands the phone back to 
Frank. It's the 70s. Uh. Wow, he's so chill. Yeah, he doesn't even wait for Confirmation. Sean O'Reilly to get on to the, phone. the phone. He's mm -hmm. like, ah, secretary, here you go. Then Frank has a fake phone conversation with Sean O'Reilly. Right. He puts down the phone and he's like, okay, Lieutenant Combs, me and Sean O'Reilly have this big business to discuss. Is it okay if he comes to the prison and like we just talk for 10 minutes in his car about this in official important business? And what? Lieutenant Co Yeah, and Lieutenant Combs is like, totally. Gene comes back disguised as Agent Sean O'Reilly. Frank walks out of the prison as C.W. Dunlap, and he's, and he's like, like, bye, dude, yep. later, peace, love, basketball. And then they drive away. What? Seriously? Yeah, That's he hops he in, they just, they leave. Jean gives him a little money. Where'd she get this money from? She's an independent woman. She gives him some money. And she leaves. Yeah. Wow, he just ditches her. With the money that Jean gave him, he takes the bus to New York. He's there for a couple weeks. Uh. Then he's like, I have some money in Virginia and he wants to access it, so he takes a train to D.C. Okay. And he checks in to a- Checks into a motel! Checks into a motel. I need uh, a room, please. One room, please, like he did when he checked into prison. Exactly. Okay. And the motel clerk is like, sure, you can have a room. Nice. But the motel clerk used to be a flight attendant. And the motel clerk is like, I know that guy, he's wanted. They recognize him? They recognize him. Wow. And so they call the police. <laughs> they surround the motel within about an hour. Wow. So Frank has to think fast. Right, he's gotta get out of here again. How does he get out? Does he hide in the air duct? Does he disguise himself as a different motel guest? Or does he walk out the back? Definitely seems more of someone who can like talk his way out of situations. Mm -hmm. So I would say he disguises as somebody else. Wrong. <laughs> That's not what he does. But like he could. He totally could, but they know he's in the motel. So what he actually does is he walks out the back. Oh my God. <laughs> he really has to like restrain himself from making a run for it. He just wants to like bolt, but he right. knows bolting yeah, that, is suspicious. Yeah, that's a guilty man. Yeah. Yeah, if you're running. Guilty people run. That's why I don't run ever. Same. <laughs> yes. But he runs into two police officers. Ah. And they're like, freeze. Right. And they put their guns at him. He's gotta think quick. Right. So he pulls out his wallet and he's like, Davis, FBI. What? Then, so he does pretend to be somebody else. He does pretend to be somebody okay, else. Okay, so I wasn't completely wrong. You weren't, but he leaves the motel. He holds up his wallet and he's like, do you guys know if Sean O'Reilly's here? They're like, oh, they lower their guns and they're like, oh, uh, 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 like, we don't know. Yeah, what? they're f***ing dumb. They don't know that he's the guy that they're looking for? He doesn't even have a disguise yep. on. And he's basically like, okay, you guys hold down the fort and I'll go around front and check if he's there. And they're like, okay. And they let him go. And that's how he escaped. So he commits all these crimes, he escapes from a federal detention center, and then now he's like living as a free man, living off of book and movie royalties. Yeah. So I did pretty badly. <laughs> yeah, you would not have been able to escape prison in the 70s. He was only 23 when he did it. <gasps> that's younger than me. Yeah. Tell people get away with everything. They do.